Hi all, welcome back to Microbiology Lectures. Uh, this time out, we're going to talk about algae. And so, again, back to Protista and that kingdom and the classification. Um, so, sometimes the classification is messy, where organisms get put is messy, but often we call animal like protista protozoans and plant like protista algae that being said there are some animal like protista that do photosynthesis that sometimes like euglena sometimes it's considered an algae sometimes it's considered a protozoan so just keep that in mind that when we're talking about algae we're still talking about the kingdom protista, sometimes they're called, algae are called photosynthetic protozoans, um, but we're talking about organisms that generate their own energy through photosynthesis. So, they have chloroplasts. Now, how they got their chloroplasts, we divide this in two ways. Okay, one which we call primary endosymbiosis. We talked about endosymbiosis um, quite a while ago, and that's the process of going from prokaryote, prokaryote to eukaryote, or how um, many scientists believe the evidence is overwhelming for that, uh, that evolutionary trend from prokaryote to eukaryote. Well, primary endosymbiosis when it comes to algae and chloroplast means that a non-photosynthetic eukaryote consumed something like a cyanobacterium. Cyanobacterium um, do photosynthesis. Okay? Um, so, the, so in this case, the cyanobacterium is now represented in that organism as a chloroplast. Secondary endosymbiosis would mean a non-photosynthetic eukaryote consumed a photosynthetic eukaryote, okay, and um, which had already arisen from primary endosymbiosis. Okay? So, the the reason why we distinguish between these two is because some chloroplasts have two membranes, and if they have two membranes, they're primary endosymbiosis. Some have three membranes, indicating that it's secondary endo endosymbiosis. Okay, so just keep that in mind when like, you're studying algae or looking at different types of algae or whatnot. Um, if it's two membranes, it's primary. If it's three membranes, it's secondary. Um, most of the time, they'll have a rigid cell wall that is composed of cellulose, just like plants. Um, they realize that sometimes algae are classified as plants, okay? But they're not plants for a, a few reasons. First of all, they have no roots, they don't have stems, um, and so we often consider them not to be plants, but rather protista that are photosynthetic. They can be unicellular or multicellular. Obviously, the ones that are multicellular are the ones that we often um, that are often labeled as plants, even though they they're not plants. Okay. So, for example, you, you have um, small unicellular photosynthetic organisms again using chloroplasts to generate. Um, carbohydrates, and then you have some that are also potentially microscopic, but we'll look at some that are multicellular that are not microscopic, like kelp, um, that would form, you know, a multicellular organism that are still photosynthetic. This one here happens to be Volvox, um, which is kind of an interesting uh, organism or group of organisms that often occur in freshwater and, and um, are a, a big portion of the phytoplankton plankton that you see in a lot of freshwater systems. 
All right, so types of algae. Let me just go through some of these algae. Normally, the algae and its type is distinguished by what type of pigment or accessory pigment do they have in um, their chloroplast. So what's the pigment that is driving uh, the photosynthetic, photosynthetic properties of that organism? So all of them will contain chlorophyll A, some contain chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, but also they'll often have some series of accessory pigments that absorb the different wavelengths and often will reflect um, certain, uh, certain wavelengths and that gives them their color and that's normally what we label the organism is. So like if they have chlorophyll A and B and they're reflecting green wavelengths at like 550 nanometers in that range, then we normally call them green algae. So that's just an example of that. So again, if you don't remember back from previous uh, biology courses or maybe even physics courses and things like that, um, Photons come in as wavelengths. Wavelengths of visible light to humans is somewhere around like 350 nanometers to about 750, seven, a little over 750 potentially um, nanometers. And so within that, there are pigments. There are um, typically fats um, that can, lipids that can absorb certain wavelengths and some that uh, reflect certain wavelengths. So like the carotenoids or the keratins, um, this is what gives you things like colors like orange and red and things like that. Um, like this is why carrots are, are um, named carrots or maybe it's vice versa. That may be where the carotenoids or carotenoids came from. Um, but at any rate, orange, so it reflects the higher wavelengths um, or the higher uh, nanometer wavelengths. Um, chlorophylls typically are going to reflect around that 550, giving that back that green light. So what the organism uses as an accessory pigment often will give it its color, and that's how we describe what that organism is. For example, diatoms, um, so these are going to be single-celled organisms. They're often kind of a gold-brown. Fucooxanthin um, is the pigment that they have, an accessory pigment that they have. Um, and so that's kind of this, this brownish, goldish color. Um, that's what, what it reflects, okay? And, um, and so they're often that color and they have that unique pigment. These guys make up a large portion of what we call the photoplankton um, and so these are the organisms that are doing photosynthesis in the water column. Um, very important for food sources for lots of different organisms including the zooplankton which we talked about before that are eating phytoplankton or photoplankton um, and uh, consuming that material and then just starting kind of that cycle. Um, and so diatoms, again, they don't all have to be that golden brown. Some are like a greenish color, um, which would uh, suggest that they have more chlorophyll A or B or both. Um, but again, they can come in all kinds of crazy shapes and sizes. Um, kind of interesting group to look at and uh, very abundant in aquatic environments. Brown algae, again, that gold color, that brown color comes from uh, the fuca axthen. Um, and uh, these are like often, I would say, these are like really common for people to call these guys plants. Um, they're not plants, they look like their plants, but these are multicellular um, algae that form things like kelp forests um, that can be extremely uh, 
thick and long and very, very important for food resources and habitats for many marine organisms. Um, and then from a commercial perspective, like we know that they produce um, alginate, which is a thickening agent for things like ice cream, toothpaste, etc. Um, we actually get quite a few different uh, thickening agents from algae. And so um, alginate is one. Um, auger is another, which we'll talk about when we talk about red algae. Um, green algae, again, chlorophyll A and B. We kind of already talked about this. These are closely related to plants or we believe they're closely related to plants and will often be seen on, you know, rocks and terrestrial substrates, anywhere where it's wet and uh, there's enough light for the organism to do photosynthesis. Um, so, uh, Volvox uh, is, uh, you know, often in, in that green algae and so more in the aquatic form where it's not stationary on rocks or growing in um, rocks but rather it's a phytoplankton moving through the water but lots of um, different types of green algae very important f as food sources for lots of organisms snails and um, other scraper uh, organisms like mayflies and other things will consume a lot of green algae. And then the red algae, again, this is another group that's often considered a plant. It's phycocyan. Um, it's what gives it the red color. Um, they, there's lots of varieties of this, um, some of which is loose and, and um, kind of thin membranes, multicellular thin membrane kind of uh, organisms. And then there are some that are much thicker um, and with calcium carbonate uh, secretions that we utilize for medical um, importance because the calcium carbonate, the corallines that they release um, allows for like bone grafts to do better and things like that. The nori um, is this group here and this is the group that you often see uh, people consuming um, for things like sushi roll or um, uh, like the little kelp, dried kelp patties and things like that. Um, that's actually normally a red algae, although sometimes it's called kelp. It's a red algae that we so this is where we get auger from. Um, so for micro students, this is the auger that you're growing bacteria on is the polysaccharide that's coming from different species of red algae. Okay, um, that will do it for the algae. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the animals that we're going to talk about in micro, which is Normally, they're just considered the parasites like hemolymphs and cestoids and flukes and things like that.